Hey guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a little overview of Gaia GPS on the computer. In my previous video, I did a Gaia GPS phone app overview, and this is going to be all about how you can access it on the computer, the different features, and just all around it's much easier to use and make your own maps and routes and stuff like that on the computer versus on the phone. The phone app is so, so great for when you're on the trail, but at home and for planning, I actually prefer to use it on the computer and I use it um, probably almost daily. So if you want to follow along, I highly recommend uh, maybe watching this video on your phone and using your computer to follow along. So let's get into the video. Okay, so once you sign into your Gaia Premium account, it will take you directly to the main map. And here you can zoom in and out using your mouse or the zoom in and zoom out buttons here in the bottom right hand corner. In the upper left hand corner, you will find this search bar. Here you can search basically anything, rivers, mountains, trails. I just typed in Mount Bachelor and um, just clicked on this first one and it will take you directly to the mountain, which is pretty cool. It shows you the coordinates, the elevation of Mount Bachelor, the current weather, which I think is pretty cool. It also shows you the trail. So if you click down here, it will show you the trail that goes up to Mount Bachelor. If you click on the first icon here, it says view map overlays. Now this will show you your waypoints, your waypoint labels, your routes and tracks. You can see on my map, I currently have routes and tracks turned on. So you can see all of my colored lines here on my map. These are the routes that I've made and the tracks that I have recorded. If I turn those off, you'll see the map will be blank. If I turn on my waypoints, these are just waypoints that I've set. Public tracks is cool because you can see other people's hikes, which is neat. We're going to click on the view map layers. Here are just all the map layers. I always have Gaia Topo as my primary map layer. I find it really, really nice as far as the coloring, the elevation lines. It shows most of the trails. I have only been in a situation like once or twice where it hasn't shown a trail that was on a paper map. And these are all the things that I've used in the past that aren't turned on currently. The cell phone coverage is pretty cool. I have used that in trip planning when people ask me if there's cell phone coverage. So you can see if I zoom out here, and turn on this feature, it'll show red, dark red, pink, um, as far as the strength of cell phone coverage. Current wildfires, um, there isn't really anything. You can see there's a little one right over here. And then of course, there are some in um, Arizona, California. So you can see current wildfires, which is a, a good layer to turn on every once in a while. The fresh sat cloud free layer is great for checking current snow conditions actually. So if you zoom in here on the Wallawas and it'll give you the date on when the satellite image was updated. So this was actually just recently updated. So it's pretty accurate. Snow depth, it's been hit or miss for me. To be honest, especially this year, um, it said a lot of things were snow free when I knew they weren't because I had just been there, but you can see the coloring shows the different depths of snow. So I don't know that I would rely on that too much just because it didn't seem to be too accurate this year. These are um, old wildfires. I use this layer a lot actually when I'm doing book research and need to get the names of old burns. It gives you the name and the year of old burns. So like this is the Millie fire from 2017 and it shows you kind of the 
the outline of it and the borders of it, which is cool. There's so many different map layers here that you can turn on. They have stuff for Canada and Europe and Australia, New Zealand. It's pretty much endless. Now we're going to go down to manage your saved um, items. So these are going to be all the things that I have saved. You can filter, you can search. So I use this a lot. I have a ton of saved routes. If I need to search for something, I can have it. I can click on it. It'll show me the track that I recorded during my hike. It'll show me all of the stats and everything that I need to know. You can share it from here. You can email it to people. It's pretty great. This is just your map preferences, kind of like that feature on your phone where if you want to change something about the way your map looks. Now let's get into the fun stuff, creating a waypoint. So you just hit new waypoint and it'll basically put a waypoint on the map and you can drag it to whatever location. So let's say you want to mark a good campsite or something like that. You would just drag it to that area and then you can name it. You can put notes like there's room for two to three tents or there's great fishing or whatever notes you want to make about this waypoint. And then you can add an icon. If I'm marking a camp spot, I always put the tent icon and then you can save it. I'm not going to because I have so many waypoints on here already. So now comes the fun part, creating a route. You'll just click on create route and from here your icon looks like a little plus sign. So basically if you want to backpack from Six Lakes Trailhead and do a little loop around Mink Lake and whatever, you can figure out the mileage. So basically you click on your starting point, Six Lakes Trailhead, and then I click on basically every junction just in case I need to delete something. I'm not deleting the whole track. So I'm just going from junction to junction and I'm clicking and that will create the track. You can see it's kind of adding up the mileage here on the left. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky. You have to kind of hold it there for a while for it to create the route. I don't know if that's just mine and maybe my program is slow or something but I have um, noticed that it can be a little finicky. And then you just keep on clicking wherever you want to go if there's already a trail. Now, if there is no trail, it will basically just go in a straight line as the crow flies. So make sure that you are actually clicking on a trail. Otherwise, it's not really going to be accurate mileage. And then you're just going to click on the end and get the total mileage, which is super, super cool. You can see that this whole little trek was going to be around 21.4 miles with over 3,000 feet elevation. You can see the maximum elevation, the minimum elevation, the total mileage, and you can also do this day by day too. Um, I just did the whole route, but you can literally do it day by day and have the total daily mileage. I'm just going to name it here. You can set the color, you can change that, and then you hit save and it's right there. You can export it, you can share it, you can move it to a folder. The create area, I'm not sure. It's the same as on your phone. I don't need to download anything on the computer, so I've actually never used this feature on the computer. My favorite feature is the print feature. So anything you're seeing on your computer screen, you can print. So you don't have to buy maps. If you have a printer and you're going to a specific area, I suggest printing. So easy, you literally just hit print and it prints all the trails there for you. Over here is just another way to access your tracks and your routes, basically um, in a list form. So it just looks a little bit different, doesn't have it on the map like you saw in the previous screen. Um, you can see all your waypoints, all of your routes, your tracks, your downloaded areas, all of that, your folders, which is handy. And then you can go back to the map by hitting explore the map. So another thing I wanted to show you on here is the hikes feature that you can look up. You can look up trailheads 
and then of course it will show you the trail as well. So here you see the Green Lakes Trail, 9.6 miles, the elevation gain, approximate total time, and then you can save this trail, so that's really handy. And then if you click on it here, it will show you people's pictures, it will give you like an overview, kind of like all trails, pretty much everyone is familiar with all trails. So it's kind of like that. I showed you this on the phone app as well. People can add a report. Again, the reports are few and far between. It's not like all trails, but the more that people use it, the more valuable it becomes. You can download the GPX file, which is really handy. You can get driving directions. You can share it. Shows you the seasonal popularity. Yeah, and you can also see other nearby hikes, which is great for if you are traveling. Um, I just clicked on the Moraine Lake. Yeah, just wanted to share that little feature. And this is great for if you're traveling and just looking up areas and hikes to do while you're traveling. Thank you so much for watching this quick overview. I hope it was helpful in learning how to use the Gaia GPS tool on your computer. Now, since you've watched the Gaia phone app video and this video, I want you to comment below if you have any and all questions about Gaia, any features that you want me to specifically go over maybe more in depth for part number three. Obviously, if there aren't any questions or anything like that, I won't do part three, but if there's a fair number of significant questions that you want me to go over, I will definitely do a part three of this Gaia GPS series. Again, if you want to get Gaia Premium, I have the link below where you can save some money on Gaia Premium. Again, everything I showed you on here is Gaia Premium features only. So if you don't have it yet, if you want to upgrade for the year, click down below, you get a couple dollars off. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next adventure.